Today we're going to be looking at this standard 4-3-3 tactic and at a glance it doesn't look like there is much special about it. However, look at the midfield there. Three roaming playmakers. Now usually a rule of thumb is that you only need one playmaker on the pitch but this has three. All roaming playmakers or on support role with certain instructions that are pretty much all the same. Surely that can't work. Well, with 8th media predicted place Santos, it has 1st place and by a country mile as well, 9 points above Gremio, who, I mean, Gremio, Sao Paulo, Flamengo, Palmeiras, Internacional as well, all have fantastic teams in the Brazilian league, and I don't think Santos really has that. And this really is without any other signings either in the first season. We can see here, there's no any other signings compared to what was at the club at Santos to begin with. But it doesn't just stop there because if we take a look at competitions, they went through the Copa Libertadores into the knockout areas where they were knocked out by San Lorenzo. But then they went into the Copa Sudamericana and they got all the way to the final, losing only to Palmeiras. So it is quite incredible how this tactic has worked out. Only losing five games throughout the whole season, we can see the teams that they lost against there. Statistically, it is quite impressive as well because they scored the most goals, 25 more goals than Flamengo in second place or in just 38 games, which of course is a really high amount, 660 shots. So not only is this got three playmakers, but you might have known that there was, you might have seen that there was a complete forward. A role that I haven't really used this year, I didn't really like it last year. And now I'm thinking, is complete forwards the way to go? Because we're having the most shots by a country mile, uh, the most dribbles as well. We'll take a look at more of the instructions and everything, because obviously this must play a part into it. And if we look at fewest conceded, with joint fourth in fewest conceded, only conceding 37 goals, despite scoring so many. Now, I'm gonna highlight some of the goals in this game here. A 5-0 victory against Flamengo, who I actually consider to be one of the best teams in the league. They've got some incredible players, Gabriel Barbosa, they've got Pedro, Arasquiato, I think is another one. They are one of the best teams in Brazil and yet Santos who I dare say are good they're not amazing they just absolutely annihilated and we've seen in that previous goal there the striker dropped back into the role and then became the provider for the inside forward or the inverted winger that's what the complete forward brings that maybe an advanced forward or a poacher doesn't and we're going to see more of that the second goal here a bit of wing play before the the fullback what a pass that is again to the opposite side Mourinho who I think is pretty much Santos's star player uh, does very well in goals and assists well obviously he benefits from that that's a Roman playmaker making that forward run and a lovely little dink over the goalkeeper there naughty finish but he obviously exploits the gaps in between the two defenders and here where we have a bit of a low block situation Madsen creates a little bit of space and brings it across it's poor defending but it's still it's good build-up play and this final one here down the left hand side we can see we lose the ball originally we win it back and we have so many players high up the pitch even with our substitutes and it's a nice little knock across from the complete forward to bag another goal. So statistically, we can see here, Raniel, 46 goals from this player here. Now it's not amazing, he is decent, but he's not amazing. What really suits the role that he does play is the comes deep to get bought. I don't really like that player trait, but I guess in a complete forward, it works really well. I mean, it must work well, he's got 46 goals. Being just behind him though, and I dare say had a better season, he had a higher average rating, Mourinho, 40 goals, 20 assists. Majority of the time, and he is incredible. He looks quite scary, quite intimidating. I don't know whether there are tattoos. That makes him even more intimidating, really. I mean, we can see he's very good. The player trait shoots from distance, shoots of power. Those are the type of things that I like. And he cuts inside from that right hand, uh, right hand flank on his favoured left foot. This is where he played majority of the time. We can see a lot of the times he wasn't used here towards the end of the season. But right hand side, sometimes playing up front. And he was just picking up goals and assists every other game, pretty much. And just, just turned into probably the best player that they had this season. And winning the league, so it's not bad. Leo Baptistao, again, 28 goals and 18 assists. Probably played quite a lot uh, up front or in on that right-hand side or on the left, even. He played a lot on the left and he's not even suited to a left side. And he still played really well. Now, this tactic was created by a guy called Nav, who occasionally drops into my live streams, or Enkang, as he's named on Twitter. 
Twitch and in my Discord. So thank you very much now for sending that in to me. He's a bit of a tactician, uh, works a lot with the guy who created the Attackalus, SNG. And I, I dare say this is one of very many tactics that he has created that is absolutely fantastic. So we might see more from now going forward, but there will be a download link down below in the description. I will obviously show you the more about the tactic and why I think it works in a second. But yeah, what do you think about that? Three Roman playmakers, questionable, right? We also take a look at Athletic Bilbao, finishing second place behind Real Madrid by two points. Very unlucky, really, when you consider how good Real Madrid are compared to Bilbao. And yet we're just two points behind. We dropped a couple of draws there. We dropped one draw compared to what they did. They might have beat us on goal difference, Unless it's head-to-head, -head, I'm not too sure. But Inyaki Williams, 35 goals in the season, was the top scorer of the league. That's mental. Ike Munyain, 20 goals and 13 assists. Mental, really. Uh, Inyaki Williams also had one of the highest average ratings in the league behind Tony Cruz and Nabil Fakir. But he also had the most man of the matches. Unai Simon with the joint clean sheets. Yes, not only does this go th this tactic score goals, it's very good at keeping them out to the other end of the pitch. And we can see that highlight here. They didn't score the most goals like Santos did, but they were very close. They finished in second place. Again, they had the most shots, so maybe a little bit more clinical, and they would have scored the most goals, but still, Inyaki Williams seemed, seemed to uh, benefit from that. Most dribbles, yet again. There were three teams. We were one of them in the highest clean sheets. 18 clean sheets in 38 games is pretty good. Only conceded in 20 games. I like that a lot. We'll take a quick look at Inyaki Williams. I do think he was playing the striker role, but he tend to sometimes play out on that right-hand side. But look at this at the end of the season. In the complete forward role, three goals, two goals, three goals, three goals, two goals. The guy just like, if he scored at the, in this area, he was getting two or three. Like it was, he went a long time where if he bagged a goal, he was getting more than one. Now, before we take a look at the tack, I just want to show you a few of these goals because the Roman playmakers, they are constantly involved in build-up plays which have been leading to goals. So you're going to see, obviously, the three buzzing around in midfield here. They create a little triangle. Danny Gar Garcia, what a pass that is. The guy comes deep, collects the ball, turns, pings one long. Roman playmaker is exactly what you want them to do, but now you've got three of them. Now I know a lot of people like to use like a ball winner. That, that goal was obviously a bit terrible because of the goalkeeper. I know obviously a lot of people like to use like a ball winner or a box to box, Mazala maybe. But when you've got three players in the midfield who are all very talented on the ball, this could be a really good tactic for you. Now I'm not saying that this tactic will work with every single club because I think it's very much the same as a lot of the tactics I showcase. You have to have the right players and the right teams for this tactic to work. Athletic Bilbao and Santos kind of have those type of certain amount of players that I would say work really well, that they've got fantastic wingers who can finish, good strikers who are quick and pacey, but also can pass the ball. And the players obviously in the midfield are very good at passing. We're going to see another one here. Vesga picks up the ball. He's a Roman playmaker, bangs it out to the wing, and Yaki Williams gets in front of his man for a header. But I think this final goal is definitely where we can see Oihan Sanchez drops deep and pings the ball over the top yet again for Nyaki Williams for the lovely little beautiful dink over the goalkeeper. So out of the four goals we've seen there, all four of them had some involvement with the Roman playmaker, but two of them had one where the Roman playmaker dropped deep, he collected the ball in space, he turned, and he pinged a long ball over the top. So obviously that's where I think this tactic does work. So if we look at some of these player instructions, we can see it is set to shorter passing, but they're still, they're still pinging balls long if they can see it. Again, we're locking this again. We can select more direct. So if you are finding that your players aren't doing that, you can change that. Be more direct with the players who have that, who have the ball in the middle of the pitch there. We can see Roman playmaker on this side is very much the same as the support one on the right-hand side. So let's go through the rest of the tactic then. Complete forward, we can see shoot more often, tackle harder. Inverted wingers, cross more often, cross from deep. We can see the player's instructions that this man likes to use. Roman from position. I like that a lot, to be fair. Uh, it's very different to the other side, though. Fullbacks on attack is something that I've been using quite a lot this year. Inverted wingbacks are fun, but fullbacks on attack when you want the width to bring the ball in 
very good. Two ball playing defenders there and a sweeper keeper on support. The mentality is attacking. If we look at in possession, we're playing out of defense. The passing directness is shorter and the tempo is slightly higher. Very tiki taka. Remember that. We are playing fairly wide and we're working the ball into the box looking for those low crosses. Now, I did say previously in a tactic video that whipped crosses seems to be something which work if you have like an elite striker, low crosses for kind of everybody. And like obviously, if you have like a Lorenzo Luca or a Veg Horse, for instance, who's six seven with great jump and reach, maybe you should should be looking to float your crosses in don't be afraid to tweak these tactics to suit who you've got on your pitch it's not just plug and play the reason why i do these tactics is because i like looking at what works and then basing that on the team that i have and doing little tweaks to suit my team and you should be doing that too it's very fun now if we go to in transition we can see here it's counter press but it's hold shape it's not counter. When you get the ball, you're not darting forward again. It's hold shape, which basically means your team will then still be in the correct shape when you win the ball back to start making those triangle passes instead of we've won the ball back, but everybody's on the right hand side. We've just got a bomb at any forward anyway. It kind of makes it more sense in the fact that you won't lose possession as much and you'll be a little bit more sensible when you do win the ball back, but you are pressing quite high at the pitch to win the ball back originally. Nothing selected on the right hand side here, but out of possession, we can see trigger press much more often. Like I mentioned, you're trying to buzz around and win the ball back. High line of engagement, high defensive line, using tighter marking with a standard defensive width. So it's quite standard to be honest. And that's what I like about it. It's simple, it's simple in its like in its form, but there's little tweaks which just work. And I think, of course, you're gonna need the players to play the, in, the, in the right roles, especially in this role, I think, unless you have somebody like Inyaki Williams. If we take a look at Inyaki Williams again, I mean, he only has 10 for passing, but good vision, He's very pacey. He's a little bit intelligent in, in the fact that he has some decent mental attributes there. But what he does have, like moves into channels, not for passable, I suppose he doesn't really look like he is a complete forward. He's just worked in there quite well. And Raniel's very much the same. He has good passing, not great, good vision. Uh, mentally he is very very good i like the aggressiveness of uh, of his game he does have that comes deep to get born i think that does work quite well uh, we've seen a couple of goals where they drop in here and it leaves the inverted wingers just so much time in space almost like you're playing strikerless at times which we know defenders just don't know how to defend against it and when you have three roman playmakers all looking for that deadly pass this is where this tactic could become deadly for you so let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments down below have you ever used more than one playmaker? Have you used it successfully? Of course, the link will be down below for you to try this tactic out yourself. If it doesn't work, maybe it's just the players. I'm not too sure, but it does work here for these two teams, as we can see from the results. Thank you very much once again for now for creating it. Patreon members, really do appreciate all your support recently. There's been loads of new Patreon members, and I really do appreciate it. And if you want to join up and support me as a content creator, the three pounds here allows you to vote for the future rebuilds. And if you add two pound onto that up to the five pound tier, then you get the save game file. And with every single rebuild, of course, from now on, we're setting you challenges five years years into the future after we do our five years so you can download the save game file and give it a go yourself not to mention some of these videos will be early access to those patreon members so thank you very much once again to all my patreon members all of you new guys coming on and all the ones previously honestly i really do appreciate it and thank you very much for watching the video if you can smash a like that would be great and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye